Good Luck Chuck is about a guy who is cursed to never find love. So he dates girls, and the girls he dates will always marry the guy they date after him, but he will never get married himself. It's an interesting premise, but it's executed horribly and all the characters are annoying. Let's just plow through this. It opens with a group of kids who are playing spin the bottle. And this scene gets way too close to, well, let's just say getting the viewer on some kind of FBI watch list, so I'm not even going to show it. But the point is that Charlie likes this girl, but he gets paired up with this goth girl, and he doesn't do what she wants, so she puts a curse on him that he will never find love, but everyone he's with will. They could have had this scene without all this uncomfortable stuff, so who thought this was a good idea? Also, these kids must have wonderful parents for letting them be in this movie. So this is adult Charlie and Stu. Charlie is a dentist, and Stu is a plastic surgeon. I wonder what kind of plastic surgeon he is. Dr. Boob Jobs! Lovely. I can already tell this is going to be a great movie. They then go to Chuck's ex's wedding, and we learn what a piece of crap Stu really is. And we get this slow walk thing with Cam, showing how clumsy she is, and I wonder who Chuck's going to end up with in the end. And just to show more of the curse, the bride throws the bouquet, and it kills a bird, and lands right into Chuck's ex's arms. So now, all of a sudden, there's a bunch of women in his lobby because of a match profile that someone posted about him. So Charlie and Stu then run into Carol, who, what a surprise, is getting married. This is like two days after she met this guy. And just as I forgot the camera's even in this, it shows where she works and her pothead brother. I don't know why he's in this since he doesn't do anything and he's just there to be annoying. So Cam eventually slips down the slide and fake hits her mouth on the edge and chips a tooth just so she can get back in contact with Chuck. So they go to his office and he fixes her tooth and since she's so clumsy she hits her head and launches these prongs into Chuck's back. So as she's leaving her car won't start so Chuck has to jump start her car even though she has a Prius, which is an electric start car, so they don't work this way, and almost kills him. And then she locks herself out, but this black button on the door handle means that it's unlocked by a fob, which will not lock the doors if the fob is in the car. If they wanted her to have all these problems, maybe don't give her a car that has preventative measures against them. Oh my god, so Chuck drives her home, and she breaks his convertible top, and now she's locked out of her house too. So her solution is to break a window with a brick. This character really is dumb. But after that, Charlie goes home, and his secretary Reba broke into his house, and basically forces him to have sex with her. I think there's a word for that. Stu gets a scene to freak out and tell Chuck that he should only be using this power to get with as many hot chicks as he can, just to remind you of how annoying and crappy he is. I really don't think I can show anything he says without getting this video flagged. Where's your manners, head? <laughs> it's really sad when a five second character is the funniest character in this movie. And I'm trying to figure out why they're out in the park playing frisbee like a couple of ten year olds. So this moron convinces this moron to actually listen to him. And this starts a four minute montage of him taking advantage of his curse and the whole thing is so graphic there's no way I can show any of it. This movie really pushes what an R rated movie can get away with. I seriously don't know how this didn't get an NC-17 rating. Also is part of his curse that he can't get anyone pregnant because I can't believe he never accidentally got someone pregnant. So after doing all that, he decides it's a good idea to ask Cam out again, and for some dumb reason, she agrees. But she tells him she's also interested in some other penguin-obsessed guy named Howard Blaine. So they go on a date, and since she's so clumsy, this trope is getting so annoying. She runs into a pole, and there's no way she ran into this pole hard enough to make it wobble like this, which means it's obviously fake. During the date, Stu calls Chuck to tell him that the curse is real because everyone he has ever had a relationship is married now. God, this movie is stupid. So they decide to put the curse to the test by having him sleep with, I guess, the grossest woman ever. Who thought making this movie was a good idea? 
Then to really test it, Stu asks her out while Chuck pretends to be sick in order to avoid Cam. I think at this point I completely lost interest in this movie, but let's just power through this. So Stu goes out with her and well, they're not getting married, so then this happens. And all is well and good until he turns on the TV and this convenient news story is on. And it turns out Stu lied and didn't go out with her cause he's a liar. So, in order to not lose her, he starts acting like a psycho, and how did he have enough time to buy and make all this food? Good god, every character is annoying. Then, he buys her tons of flowers, hires singers to bring him to work, and then waits in her car for her to get off work. This officially has turned into a stalker movie. Why did they think this was a good idea? But, the next day, he goes to her work and attacks some guy she's talking to. How has he not been arrested yet? and she finally breaks up with him. Oh no, what if they don't get back together by the end of the movie? Oh my god. So while he's depressed in the rain, a bottle conveniently falls, and he remembers a curse that was put on him by the goth girl when he was 10. So he goes to her house, and she basically tells him that this is really stupid. Even she knows how dumb this movie is. So, in order to make Cam happy, he calls Howard Blaine to have him meet her, so I guess they can get married. So then he goes home and is so depressed he plays a video game without the controller actually being on. So Stu and his fiance? How the hell is he getting married? Tell him that Cam is going to Antarctica with Howard. Then we get this cliche trying to get to the girl in the airport before her flight leaves and she's gone forever trope. And he acts like the most suspicious person in the world but every employee and security guard don't say anything and just let him through anyway. But it was all worthless because Howard's already married and she's coming back in a week or something. Do producers not understand how unrealistic this trope is? Can you imagine sitting on a plane and watching two people act like this? They would get kicked off the plane! And it turns out he really was cursed because this lady's a psycho. And they get back together and go to Antarctica together. And for God knows what reason, they decide to end the movie with the worst possible thing they could have done. Don't even ask, you don't want to know. This movie takes what could be an interesting premise and completely wastes it with terrible characters and really questionable decisions. The acting is actually kind of hard to judge, Jessica Alba's acting is pretty bad. But for everyone else, I can't tell if it's bad acting or if it's just because the characters are so poorly written. It's like the actors are just trying to do the best with what they have. And some of the situations that happen are completely unbelievable. And Chuck and Stu are just terrible people with no real redeeming qualities at all. Some of the sex scenes go on way too long. And there are scenes that are just uncomfortable to watch. Like, the first scene with the kids, and then the last scene during the credits. I really can't believe this didn't get rated NC-17. Don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, and thanks for watching.